Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. There are some very interesting new data which have uh, looked at the role of CD30 in Hodgkin lymphoma and have suggested a, a new role for the microenvironment in Hodgkin lymphoma. So it's been well known for really a number of years now that there's a lot of crosstalk going on within the Hodgkin lymphoma lymph node between the Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cells and the inflammatory background infiltrate. And it appears as though the Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cell relies upon survival signals that it receives from many of the surrounding cells. So that's been well established for a number of years. What, the, what these new data um, suggest is in fact that it's, it's kind of more complicated and intriguing than that. And it appears as though the Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cells within the lymph node perform a network, they, they form a network um, of cells which are linked uh, by these CD30 bearing protrusions that actually appear as if they actually connect the cells. And what's interesting about this is that if, if there's crosstalk between the Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cells, which is important to their survival, and if those protrusions ex express CD30, which they appear to, then this uh, makes the CD30 you know, potentially an even better target. Furthermore, we know that targeting tubulin um, is, is helpful in actually breaking down these protrusions and breaking down these membrane-bound vesicles, which you know, would then subsequently result in a loss of crosstalk and reduce survival for the Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cell. So brentuximab vadosin firstly targets CD30 and thereby it is going to be uh, you know, targeted to these vesicles. And secondly, because of the mechanism of action of the conjugated drug, which is an anti-tubulin drug, there's good reason to believe that it will um, you know, be beneficial in terms of destroying these cross-links and cross-talks between the cells.